All right. We're looking at why anti-Semitism is so bad. Now, anti-Semitism, I think, would probably be better served anti-Jewishness or something like that. But, uh, but even anti-Semitism, that's kind of all Arabic people and all that, it's just a really bad deal. Now, you might say, well, uh, Brother Walter, I really think you're virtue signaling here. No, I mean, it's just weird to me because there's some very informative websites that I go to on occasion. And, but then all of a sudden, they'll say, the Jews. And I'm like, the Jews? I mean, so how this comes across to me is they're saying like every Jew has this inherent conspiratorial thing that all Jews get together and say, you know what, we're going to take over the world from the Gentiles. And I just don't think that's true any way, shape, or form. I've had a lot of Jewish friends over the years, you know, some I haven't kept up with. Wife had a Jewish boss at one time. We'd go out to eat with him all the time. I uh, think we baptized his wife and different things. He's come down to the altar our church to talk to Jesus and, and different things such as that. And so it's just like, this is Orwellian when somebody says, you know, the Jewish conspiracy or the Jews control the world. And I'm just like, what are you even talking about? You know, first of all, if you're Christian, you shouldn't be talking about that because we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but uh, against principalities, powers, rulers of darkness, spiritual wickedness in high places. So that's a non sequitur right there as a Christian. Uh, the Jesus hung on the cross for Jews. Yes, many Jews rejected him. But see, even to say the Jews rejected Jesus, well, some did, some didn't. Paul was a Jew. <laughs> you know, Peter was a Jew. And so some accepted him, and some to this day accept him. I was reading in the United States of America, there's like 876,000 or 879,000 Messianic Jews, people who believe Jesus is the Messiah. I was reading a, another article about a 106-year-old rabbi who died. He said in a year, open this uh, envelope and God has revealed to me who uh, the Messiah is. And it was Jesus. That's how we say it in English, obviously. They would say it a different way in Hebrew, but it was Jesus. And so um, I, I just, anti anything uh, to be anti, I mean, obviously we need to be anti-sin, amen, anti-devil, pro-God. But whenever you start saying, you know, Mexicans are this, or white people are this, or black people are this, or Asians are this, you tend to make generalities when God treats us as individuals. And we're all going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ and the judgment seat of God as individuals. Now, I do know in Matthew 25, the judgment of the Gentile nations, so to speak, but still, um, there's individuals. Your, your salvation depends on your individual walk with God. So to just say an entire group of people, I, I think, first of all, it's intellectually dishonest. I think it's intellectually lazy. And it does seem like in the world that we're living in, it's just become uh, like synagogue shootings and blowing up synagogues. And, and Christian, you know, Christ, you Christians, you are Pharisee. No, I mean... Does Phariseeism exist within the Christian church? Yes. It doesn't mean every Christian is a Pharisee and a hypocrite. It means there are certain ones that are given to that. There's many that are not. There's many that visit the widows, the fatherless, that are full of prayer, full of love, full of grace, full of mercy, and uh, full of holiness. And... Uh, so again, we just have to take people as individuals and not groups and blocks of people. And so this thing towards anti-Semitism, but at the same time, like when I went to Israel in 2010, we went to Bethlehem and we went to eat at a Palestinian restaurant. And I was so moved talking to the Palestinians and I could tell they were not used to being shown a lot of kindness. But uh, I remember, you know, in the United Pentecostal Church that there was uh, persecution amongst some apostolics in the Palestinian controlled areas. And so uh, Brother Urshan, Brother Mangan, they got with uh, President Clinton at that time, who got with Yasser Arafat, met with them. Brother Urshan met with Yasser Arafat, and they actually made the uh, people the churches were recognized, first churches to be recognized in the Palestinian area in like 41 years. Now, people say, well, Yasser Arafat, he was a terrorist and all this. Well, it, probably so. I haven't studied the history of Yasser Arafat. So, I mean, there's, there's a high probability that is. But, I mean, like Nebuchadnezzar was maybe a bad guy, but God used him. Cyrus was, uh, you know, a pagan king, and God used him. And so, 
the point being is when I was with the Palestinians, I, I think again to say all Palestinians are bad. This is just not good. This is not helpful. And uh, so Jesus, I mean, he was constantly going to the theology of the uh, the uh, oppressed, as it is, as it were, the uh, Samaritans and the demon possessed ones and the poor. And he was, can any good thing come out of Galilee? And he was raised in Galilee, and you know, so he's constantly he's going to the tax collector, Matthew. He's going to the physician. People wasted all their money on physician, and he's going to them. He's going to fishermen. And so um, women, uh, Mary Magdalene, out of whom he cast seven devils. And so this was somebody that maybe the, the society would have frowned upon and cast out. The man that was possessed with a legion of devils. That Jesus heard his cry and uh, went and cast out the devil. The, 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 he wanted to follow Jesus. And it was the people around said that they prayed Jesus to get out. So the former demon possessed person said, I don't want to be with you. The people that were around said, well, we'd rather have the demon possessed than Jesus. I mean, it's just kind of crazy. So but Jesus, the, the point being, Jesus is constantly going to people who others rejected and uh, because of God is love. And so uh, anti-Semitism, getting back to the central focal point of this video, is a terrible thing. But the anti-people, God is pro people. It's not his will that any should perish, but all should come to repentance and everlasting life. So yes, occasionally, you know, he'll strike an Ananias and Sapphira dead. Yes, they'll take communion and wrong bad things happen yes there's a sin unto death yes there's uh, Dathan and Abiram's and uh, these type people yes there's all of this type thing but God's overwhelming thing is love and again hell's had to expand herself because hell was created for the devil and his angels and it's God takes no pleasure at the death of the wicked it says it's not his will that any should perish but all should come to repentance and everlasting life so let's live by the love of God and uh, now let me just say this this, just because I would have a disagreement of view with you, I would disagree with your theology, but I would still love you. And so, you know, I think in a what's known as pluralistic society, a society with uh, many different belief systems, not necessarily syncretic, but maybe some in a representative democracy. I mean, it becomes a point in time I have to say, I disagree with your position, but I love you and not make these things personal. So, um, you know, the Bible says, Romans 9 through 11 says it so good, that uh, the Jews might be enemies of the gospel, some of the Jews, the ones that have rejected Jesus, but they're beloved of the Father's sake. And uh, so God, and the calling of election, uh, God is going to, uh, once again, he deals with them through the gospel of Jesus Christ, through his spirit today. And he will deal with them on a corporate level sometime in the future, according to Romans 9 through 11, best I can understand eschatology. So God bless. Love you. Let's just let the love of God shine through. Let's see everybody come to Jesus. Talk with you later in Jesus' name.